Well, very, very good afternoon to all our friends there in the GCC. Salaam Alaikum and Namaskar. I hope everybody is doing well. I hope uh, things are getting better, inshallah. And uh, hope is the only strategy that we have. Uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Amit Malhotra, co-founder of WFM. We are a print magazine in India and the Middle East and also a digital platform. Uh, before I begin uh, the sequence of the presentation and the flow, I would just like to remind you all that uh, this is our 17th webinar across the world. And we've taken a little break in the month of June to re-understand and see focusing on content and focusing on what we want to do going forward, how to disseminate information. I'm very happy to tell you that we had about 800 registrations for this uh, webinar and we have from all over the GCC, including all of the UAE, Qatar, Egypt, Iran, Jordan, Lebanon, and also some people from Turkey and so on have also joined. Of course, so we have a little bit of a global audience. I hope that English is the perfect uh, communication methodology today. So that's what we're going to do. So today's webinar is on designing and building uh, high-rise ventilated brain screen facades. So in today's uh, session, uh, we're very delighted to have a specialist, Agnes Colte from Colte Facades. She heads the business. She's been in Dubai for the last 15 years. She's from Hungary. And she's going to talk about special aspects of designing and building high-rise facades. Followed by that, uh, we have two of our good friends from Fisher, Middle East, who will be talking about products. We have Mustafa, who is a technical manager at Fisher, Middle East, and probably to just uh, introduce you to them a little bit. Uh, Agnes is a master's in architecture from Hungary and a master's in facade engineering from the UK. Uh, she's worked with Zaha Hadid. I don't need to introduce that. And she's worked at Meinhardt, Rambol. So before she started her own service here, uh, she's a consultancy firm, a large practice in the Middle East, very well known, also office in Singapore. So she has all the ultimate capabilities and I will leave it to her. Of course, as you can see here, she was uh, recently part of uh, the Burj Khalifa project, the business bay in Dubai, the Skyview Fountain, the Burj Vista, as well as a lot of other projects around the world. Uh, thereafter, we have uh, Mustafa. He's a technical manager at Fisher. Uh, from the Middle East. He's a licensed PE backed by 16 years of experience in the construction industry. He was awarded the best manager by Fisher. And Mustafa is a well-known person in the region, I guess. We have a lot of architects and consultants here in this uh, webinar today. So I guess that you would all know him. He would talk a little bit about himself once he starts. Also, we are joined with uh, Muzaffar Ahmed Sayyid from uh, Firestop Department from the Fire Range of uh, Fisher. He's also a successful and qualified engineer and his specialty is fire stop. He's gonna talk about post-installed anchoring installation systems. Uh, he's from IIT, which is good institution, one of the top institutes in India, and uh, institution of fire engineers in the UK. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, today's uh, webinar is gonna be sequenced like this. I have introduced the speakers. Uh, once uh, that is done, then we have a presentation for between 25 to 30 minutes by Agnes Colte followed by a presentation by uh, Mustafa and Muzaffar from Fisher. Uh, let me also tell you that we will be conducting an audience poll. My colleague at the back end will be running the audience poll. We have 10 polls. Each poll has a duration of 30 seconds where you'll be asked to give your opinion on the audience poll. Once that is over, we'll have a joint question and answer. So I would request all of you to put your questions while you, uh, while you are in this webinar. There is a small questions tab on your panel. You just have to click the question and you can ask the question. And my colleagues at the back end will take up the questions. I guess we will have a lot of questions. So feel free to ask as many questions as you would like. And then we'll be able to take up whichever questions we can. If we are unable to take your question in particular, your questions will be then sent to our panelists who in then over a week's time, they will be able to respond to you. Uh, WFMmedia.com, if you are interested to see the presentation again, all you need to do is to go to wfmmedia.com and go on the webinar panel. And by tomorrow, we would have posted the live webinar over there as well. I just give you a small brief of uh, Fisher, Middle East. Uh, I think Fisher is synonymous to fixings and everybody who's been in the facade and fenestration business should definitely know Fisher. It's a company which was founded in 48 and uh, 
it has pretty much offices all over the world manufacturing plants all over the world 1500 plus patents awesome and 14000 products so as you can see here they're a worldwide company they're a specialist and they're a very well known specialist in the field of anchors fasteners firestop and other solutions this is just a viewpoint of their factories around the world so uh, i would now like to ask uh, to bring on agnes uh, my colleague at the back end will uh, make her the presenter please and agnes uh, over to you now to give your presentation Uh, Agnes, you'll have to switch on your camera. Okay, camera is on. Um, All good. Okay, I think it's good now. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. welcome everyone. Um, I'm very pleased to be here and I'm very honored that uh, you all uh, are present to um, to have uh, this webinar today and to, to listen to us. Um, I do not have a presentation today. I will not have slides. Uh, I was thinking to uh, to talk and maybe to um, have some uh, uh, content that brings up questions and please uh, put those questions down to to Amit uh, and at the end of the session we can uh, we can get back and uh, and uh, respond these. Uh, actually, Amit, if you see some very interesting question, you can you can even interrupt my presentation. I I was hoping today to be quite informal and uh, uh, and, and personal. Uh, so the topic I actually choose myself to uh, to talk about is uh, uh, high rise buildings versus low rise buildings and how facade engineering is um, is present in uh, in these two types of, of uh, building categories because it could be quite a different approach. Um, uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, Amit has um, uh, mentioned about uh, about my company. It has been nine years already that Cortai Facet is uh, is in business, uh, and we are pretty proud to build quite a a number of buildings uh, worldwide, but most of them in Dubai. Uh, actually, a large concentration of, of high-rise buildings in Dubai downtown. Uh, and that's the experience uh, which is uh, getting accumulated um, and makes us very focused on uh, high-rise building specific facade engineering problems um, and solutions. <laughs> um, one um, correction to, to what Amit said. Uh, you mentioned Burj Khalifa. I actually think you you, you meant Burj Vista. Um, I have not been part of, uh, of Burj Khalifa. That's, uh, that's an amazing project, but uh, we have not been part of that. Um, many other uh, projects, though, uh, around Burj Khalifa uh, does carry our, uh, our name, including Burj Vista, Sky Views, um, Address the Boulevard Hotel, Fountain Views, um, a couple of uh, other buildings um, and also some pretty interesting compact shape buildings as well uh, like uh, the Opus or um, Museum of the Future which we, uh, we were part of and very proud of that. Um, okay so let's get to the to the topic low-rise buildings and, and high-rise buildings. Um, the main difference, I would say, is the quantity that goes on the facade. Uh, a high-rise building gives the opportunity to bring uh, a, a seriously large quantity of certain system that allows us, the whole um, procurement chain, to provide solutions uh, in different magnitude than, than for low-rise buildings. On the other hand, low-rise buildings are much more accessible and much more easier to install materials direct from the outside uh, without sophisticated um, um, uh, methods. Uh, that means that uh, for, uh, for high-rise buildings, uh, prefabrication would be a much more preferred method to, um, to you know, uh, bring materials together uh, and uh, install them on the building. When it comes to um, a glazed enclosure, 
we have unitized system and we have stick system. Stick system is the system which gets built uh, more on site. It's a, a more uh, site intense uh, method of building, uh, but that also means that it uh, it's less uh, intense on um, the uh, preliminary stages of um, assembling and uh, fabricating the, the, the units of site. Uh, it actually arrives to site as uh, mullions and, uh, and transoms uh, and the glass separately and the gaskets separately and it puts, gets put together on the building. Um, it can be used for high-rise buildings. Um, it's less preferred because of the need of the external access, but if the external access is uh, provided, such as in the case of balconies uh, or terraces or uh, certain type of semi-unitized enclosures where uh, it, it can be pre-assembled um, on ground and elevated in, in one piece, then, then yes, it can it can be installed on high-rise buildings as well. High-rise buildings also move differently than, than low-rise buildings, and that's more uh, something that a structure engineer can, uh, can explain better. Um, actually, I have to say it's very difficult to speak without any uh, feedback, without seeing the audience. I've never done it before. This is the first time, and it's 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 a weird experience. I'm telling you, uh, without seeing faces or or um, hearing questions. But let's get back to it. <laughs> um, so I was talking about. Uh, um, about um, uh, the building movements. So a high-rise building, um, and structural engineers can, can explain it better, uh, have certain um, uh, behavior uh, as a response of external uh, impacts like uh, uh, wind uh, or earthquake. Uh, Low-rise building, the structure uh, behaves differently. Um, high-rise building, has its, its its natural movement uh, following these uh, these uh, effects. Um, with the facade cladding, we have to allow for these movements. This does not happen uh, for for low rise buildings. It's it's more a high rise building uh, thing. So uh, the importance of uh, of uh, movement accommodation uh, is an extremely big difference when when you are approaching this too. Um, Another one would be uh, the, the, the wind load itself. Um, many times we get uh, requests from, um, from architects, developers to, uh, to increase the size of uh, balcony sliding doors, for example. Uh, yes, you can increase it, uh, especially if it's on a villa or a, a two, three story building uh, where the wind loads uh, not uh, ex uh, exceeding one and a half kPa, two kPa uh, wind pressure. Uh, on uh, larger buildings, uh, there could be localized spots for um, uh, wind pressure, which are higher than, than the typical. And those, um, it, it, uh, in the downtown area, for example, it goes up to five kPa easily. So, um, the, the same balcony door, which works for one and a half kPa, will not work for the five kPa wind load. Um, it will be smaller, or it will be bulky, bulkier, or maybe it's not, not even possible. Um, fire, I wanted to uh, to uh, mention that uh, that's also um, important to. Um, to um, look at how uh, fire spreads and behaves uh, when it comes to a larger larger building. Um, these days, it's a lot of uh, focus on uh, on uh, fire protection, and I think one of the presentations after me uh, will uh, explain about uh, perimeter fire safing. Uh, that uh, again something which. Uh, fire compartmentalization, uh, the location and uh, the sizing of these uh, these details and interfaces uh, is, is something that has to be looked at uh, with uh, additional uh, uh, care uh, when, when it comes to a larger building. 
um, many times we have the question of uh, solid cladding, whether there are any alternatives of uh, stone cladding, GRC cladding, metal cladding, pros and contras of, of using these. Um, a large part of it is actually um, preference, just, uh, just aesthetical preference, but also um, each material has their own uh, ways to, um, to, uh, to, to deal with it and some technical limitations as well. Uh, stone, for example, has it's a natural material uh, depending on the, the actual stone type uh, the, the team is choosing to, to implement. Uh, the size is quite limited. Um, typically, one meter, one meter twenty by sixty, ninety. That's that's pretty typical stone lab size. Can, can be slightly bigger, can be smaller. Uh, with GRC, uh, much larger uh, units are, are possible. Floor height, even double floor height uh, by one meter, two meter, even even larger uh, units. The limitation here comes from the practicality of dealing with such a large unit. And also don't forget the larger it is, the heavier it is, the, the more difficult it is to maneuver. So the, uh, the um, risk of uh, getting it chipped or damaged uh, during maneuvering is higher. Is that really, really practical? Not really. So there's, there's an optimal size, even if technically even larger uh, sizes could be, uh, could be possible. Uh, again, when it comes to maneuvering at a height uh, with, a, uh, with a building material piece that is hanging from, uh, from some suspension and then a team, uh, maybe in a cradle, uh, trying to, um, to push it uh, at, uh, at the final location versus uh, um, a lower building where maybe scaffolding is also uh, possible and the piece of GRC is hanging from a cherry picker and the team is a bit more comfortable uh, moving, moving around and less re restricted in movement, um, you, you could get a better result of, uh, of, of this installation. Um, uh, probably, um, Agnes, I'll probably interject yeah. with a question to you to uh, get a little bit more focus. Over the last couple of years, we have seen uh, some fires in the Middle East area and other areas as well. So as a consultant, how more important has fire stops, fire seals, and fire protection in facades becoming more and more important to you? And the message that you could send to the entire fraternity here in terms of the importance of fire safety in facades and materials. It, that it's, it's an interesting question because uh, I never ever dreamt of designing a building even much younger and even with, with the previous companies I worked with without uh, perimeter fire seals. So, um, if you are in the profession, it's, it's something that uh, uh, naturally ha has to be there. Uh, and um, I actually learned it as a, as a surprise a couple of years later uh, when some fires happened that uh, the fire safing was, uh, was not uh, designed uh, to, to be there. Um, it, uh, the, the complicacy of it comes that it's not purely the perimeter fire seal. It has to turn up at the, at the vertical uh, enclosures when it comes to uh, uh, certain locations uh, and also has to be uh, executed on site uh, properly. Uh, and that's something that uh, needs trained uh, 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 installers uh, and uh, trained inspection team. Is that the responding to your question? In the sense of the fact that now that it's even more and more important and there are the authorities there in the Middle East also pretty stringent on it, as a consultancy company, you take extra precautions while you're inspecting the building that the fire safety across the perimeter as well as from the floor to floor level is in place. And you incorporate that in your specifications very, very importantly. Honestly, to be honest, we exercise the exact same care that the we did before. Uh, I'm happy that uh, these uh, um, uh, the, the importance of this of this question pushed the whole uh, um, uh, 
condition to be um, to, to have more focus and to be uh, always uh, inspected properly but from our point of view um, it, it was always an important part of the of the building um, there are though some uh, some features which uh, which were not uh, enforced before uh, and uh, with the new regulations they they gain more importance for example um, uh, the horizontal fire barriers in the cavity uh, outside of the building. So if you have a shear wall uh, and then you have the GRC cladding or stone cladding uh, uh, attached to it uh, with a secondary steel structure and some, some cavity and uh, some insulation in that, that cavity, uh, the, the horizontal uh, closures uh, are something that is good practice. Uh, it, it was uh, less enforced uh, and less common before uh, the, the fire regulations came out. And and share with us, uh, which will be interesting for everybody, like everybody's journey is always tough to start your practice and where you are today. Uh, share with us one of your most difficult uh, projects and how you overcame your client and architect and the consultant <laughs> and, and the money and you know, it's, in, in, it's important. Everything looks very rosy in front of it when the building is over but the, the pain that you went through and and you fought for quality and you won over that you see uh, i i don't have a favorite project uh, i actually have many many projects that i like that we worked on uh, and that's one good thing about uh, uh, the the previous period uh, and um, uh, the the abundant number of projects we had in the in the uae that i could actually choose projects to work on where um, where, where architecturally we were inspired to uh, to, to work on um, my experience from all these years uh, every project has some difficult person uh, it, it could be um, uh, on contractor side it could be on on the client side the architect side and on some projects maybe maybe I'm perceived as the as the difficult person um, it's it's a personal uh, um, Thing and and I don't think that it should uh, um, uh, should uh, influence the the outcome of the project. Uh, I think if the team is is watching the benefit of the project, uh, then the project will be successful. So uh, a building is is designed and and built uh, to be there for depending on the function minimum twenty, but uh, um, typically a sixty years uh, design time. Um, so the main structural elements uh, are even longer um, and you want this building to perform well during this period and during this period there could be wind events, earthquake events, uh, um, unexpected uh, temperature extremes uh, and the building has, has to withstand this. Uh, and it doesn't really matter if there was a meeting or two where uh, where people had a bit of uh, uh, of difficulty. At the end, uh, if that building performs well and uh, investors or owner or, or uh, operator um, finds uh, that the building skin is doing its uh, uh, its uh, purpose of uh, closing off the external environment and uh, protecting a well-controlled internal environment, uh, and that means solar control, temperature control, uh, air, dust, uh, noise, fire, all these, um, water uh, as well, um, then, then the building is successful. So one, 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 I'll probably put another question to you, that as a consultant here, and you've been working here in the Middle East for quite some time, as a consultant, what would you like to tell the whole community which is joined here from the GCC? We have over 350 people listening to us right now. As a consultant, if you have a concern to clients and developers and architects, what would you tell them? Uh, not, not just that they should listen to you, what you tell them to do in terms of the design. What requests do you have? <laughs> I'm... I'm not really sure what to say. Um, I mean, I like to work on projects where the team has a good, uh, good uh, understanding. When, uh, when uh, you know, uh, I, I don't like politics. I don't like uh, things uh, uh, which, uh, which, which uh, have second uh, 
interior uh, intentions. Uh, I like to be very straightforward, um, and uh, I I like when things are things are uh, handled in a in, in an honest way. But you know, people always try to play around and always try to twist the game. And there's a blame in projects, which happens all the time. How do you how do you overcome as a consultant all these difficulties, if at all? Well, you see, that's uh, that's what I try to say. That there's uh, there's uh, there are technically correct ways. I'm not even saying that there's only one technically correct way. Um, sometimes things have many times uh, in, in life, things have different uh, solutions and different uh, ways to um, uh, to look at it. Uh, and actually, uh, th there's no such a thing really as, as, as a correct solution. There, there's a, an optimal solution for the, for the given condition. And that condition is the function of the building, the, uh, the project budget, the, the aim, the um, use and and the quality level of the of the building uh, the the time frame uh, so that optimal solution uh, if um, uh, if uh, the people in the in the team are representing and working towards an optimal solution uh, then at the end it, it, it will succeed and there's um, <laughs> not, nothing else behind it so just be straight, be simple, be straightforward. So going forward, we still are, uh, I can't say it's post COVID because COVID is still pretty much around and it, hopefully inshallah that it will go away one day. What do you see? Do you see any structural change from a facade perspective going forward in terms of how buildings will be designed or how they will be, uh, you know, kind of- I think there will be a, a general change in the whole uh, and we are already, uh, uh, witnessing uh, uh, a change in the in the whole um, uh, development mix, uh, which uh, uh, and and the magnitude and intensity of uh, of, of that development mix. Uh, as as we go ahead in time, there's uh, um, there are different uh, needs and uh, and demands in Dubai and in the in the region, uh, and uh, that that will change. Uh, also, there. Uh, there is an interesting restructuring uh, uh, process going on with uh, uh, with procurement. And while in the past uh, it was more frequent to have here uh, a traditional procurement route where the design team designs everything, uh, the facade consultant comes up with the specifications, drawings, it gets tender, it get, gets tender, the main contractor gets it, and then. Uh, there's a facade contractor either coming with the main contractor or uh, or uh, nominated and uh, and selected separately, uh, and then they all um, uh, work out the, uh, the the design document. I mean the construction uh, document, shop drawings, and uh, and and build the project. Um, recently, it's more and more designed and built uh, type of, uh, of of project. Um, I mean real design and build, not uh, I don't mean when when uh, the um, the the design is standard out at an early stage and then getting finished while the contractor is going ahead. Uh, I mean when the design is handed over to the contractor and and the contractor's team uh, is, is is building um, uh, solutions. So I, I see that uh, maybe um, becoming more frequent. And there are still a lot of jobs, uh, or I guess there'll be fewer in terms of the requirement today, but going forward from the GCC area, do you still get a fair amount of queries for newer projects? To be very honest with you, we see the exact same amount of queries as, as in last year. Um, the big difference is making decisions and awarding those, those projects, which uh, which we see uh, much slower than than before, and that's probably uh, probably also the um, the carefulness that uh, you know this this COVID uh, uh, uncertainty brought to 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 everyone. But there is still a positive hope for uh, development and more scrutiny on the project and more being more careful of things. And I and, and then from a perspective of uh, fixing fire safety, all of this you think going forward will become more improvised or more important? 
safety as an overall subject? Yeah, I mean it's it's uh, it's always a, a target and always an important thing whether it will be more important. I think if if it was not important on on any projects before, yes, it it, it has to get get important. But it's something that uh, um, that uh, that should be important. I mean the volume of of projects will uh, uh, will reduce, uh, and uh, there's a, a great uh, um, big uh, range and sele selection of uh, of already completed buildings or or near completion buildings, which is available to, for uh, for investors. So um, there there is a um, um, uh, harsher and harsher competition, uh, and in in that competition, uh, building performance, uh, safety, reputation, general reputation of the developer, of the designers, of the contractors, uh, is a more important should, should should become a more important factor than than before. Like you said, there is still queries coming, and the similar amount of queries are coming, so work is still going to be there. Of course, uh, for the next three months, I guess there'll be lesser, but then. We all hope and believe that uh, things will be better in the future. You know, Dubai is a place for for optimist people, and uh, that's that's one thing I enjoyed living here for 15 years. I have this theory that in Dubai, people are generally happy because whoever is not happy would would find a, another place where where he's happier. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's there's always optimism. Um, Let's see. Let's see what comes out of it. Right. Uh, you have any closing remark, uh, or I'll move to the next uh, presenter. Okay. Well, I do hope that I do get questions from the audience on uh, uh, high-rise buildings and low-rise buildings. Um, I wanted to mention about each system, which is definitely a, a solution more appropriate for um, uh, for low-rise buildings. Uh, I wanted to mention about. Uh, um, stone fixing uh, methods, uh, wet set stone where, where it's glued to the uh, to the uh, to the wall is something that uh, should be only uh, used on basically ground floor areas, only only a couple of meter height. Um, and mechanically fixed stone is is something which uh, uh, which should be on a, um, on higher elevations. But again, it needs to have certain uh, Type of engineering and uh, um, and and also the stone material uh, is is a very important factor in it. And I started to to talk about potential alternatives and how stone can or cannot be substituted with uh, with GRC uh, or um, uh, or precast or EPS or um, other other materials. Um, and um, you know, if if anyone interested and have a specific question, then then please do so and uh, put it in the chat. Yeah, we'll take the questions towards the end of the end of the seminar after the next. Well, thank you very much, Agnes, for sharing your experience and okay. uh, still welcome. Uh, and stay there uh, while the okay. other come on board. Thank you very much, Agnes. Thank you. Like thank you. you. You're very welcome. Uh, request my uh, back end team to please. Put on Mustafa's screen here, and Mustafa, maybe you can reintroduce yourself a little bit, and uh, the floor is yours. Hello, uh, salam alaikum. How are you again? Uh, thank you, Amit, for your nice introduction. I would like just to highlight uh, one uh, more thing. Before I joined Fisher, I work also seven years in facade industry. So after uh, that, I joined Fisher in 2010. So I have both experience, fixing experience and facade experience as well. I would like also to thank uh, Agnes for the nice presentation. And now uh, after her presentation, we know that uh, fixing system is important for high rise, even for low rise building. In the past, there was a need for mechanical fixing. Uh, and one of the most famous mechanical fixing for stone which is called as bin system. But uh, still, this system, it has a lot of challenges with the consultants and with the designers. Some of the main challenges, one main thing is the thickness of the facade. As we know, we have to fix the fixing on the edge. So the edge 
is very important factor. And minimum, I think, is 30 mm for uh, uh, soft material and 20 mm, it can work for hard material with care. Second, more important factor is the offset from the wall. Usually, we have a small sizes of stone, and when we have big distance or big offset from the wall, I don't have always concrete to fix my anchors. So what will happen? I will have a lot of anchors on the bracket and on the anchor as well. And I might have here a masonry, which will create a need of some time for a secondary steel structure. The third challenge is the type of the wall itself. Uh, sometime we have a concrete, we will be happy. And also a lot of times we will have a masonry and sometimes we'll have also white masonry, which is weak. These challenges we face in the design stage, but this is not the only challenge. If you focus in, uh, in the screen now, one of the most important real challenge for the bin system is how to install it in the site. Usually, because they have to fix the bin on the thickness, so they have to drill in the uh, side of the panel laborers to take care that they have not to scratch the surface of the stone, they go a little bit backside and they drill on the side. When they do this, unfortunately, they do some failure to the panels and they take the easy way by put some uh, uh, repair for the stone or some epoxy and fix it. What happened here, the system not became a mechanical system, it became a mechanical system with glue and it can cause a failure or safety in terms of uh, when we have a thermal expansion or also after the time with high temperature here in our region the glue here can can change so we can have also a failure due to after some years of uh, of gluing uh, problem so due to that fisher took this requirement of our client into consideration and as we are a specialist on fixing from 1947, we start to develop a system for stone fixing in 1973. It was our first uh, stone uh, fixing. Then uh, from that time till now, we developed our undercut system successfully and Fisher, a market leader in fixing, we are selling yearly more than 2 million meter square of facades. We have also more than 1,000 international references in the world wide. You can see here on the screen some of these references. Fisher improved or Fisher uh, developed a system which we can call it as a universal system, universal mechanical system, because it can work for six tone, it can work for thin material. This advantage of working of thin material and thick material makes the system can use for different materials, not only stone. It can be used for stone, it can be used for ceramic, porcelain tiles, natural stone, fiber cement, GRC, uh, HBL, or any material which thickness is more than 8 mm. We have a big, uh, we have a good solution for this. This gives our uh, clients, our architects, a lot of wide range of solution to find the suitable, uh, to use the suitable or the beauty of the materials uh, in the facades. How the system is work? The system idea is easy and professional. System idea is to create an undercut hole in the stone, means the hole inside the stone is bigger than the hole outside the stone, and transfer the actions, wind load, weight of the stone, whatever it is, from outside the stone to inside the stone. The drilling mechanism is easy. By straight drilling, then the drill will rotate to create the undercut conical volume inside. Then an installation of the anchor will create a stress-free installation because we, uh, the clip will open exactly in the volume what we created. So there is no any additional stress on the stone. I also want to show you practically how it looks. So this is a real uh, piece of transparent material. And here is the anchor in front of you. Now we are going to install the undercut anchor in this thin material. It's 10 mm only. 
and you see it is freely installed inside without any damage to the material. If you take a deep look, you can see the clip is just moving inside. Sorry, you can see the clip is moving inside here. Even the distance to the edge of this material is very small. We don't have any cracks or any stresses happen in the material. That's how it is uh, going inside. To, uh, to, to understand the benefit of our system, we created a structure comparisons between uh, pin system and undercut system. You can see here two different panels we modeled in finite element software. A structure engineer can understand uh, how uh, this can be uh, modeled in the software. You can see here this panel is with bin system and this panel with undercut system and all other conditions are same. We did not change either the panel size or the wind speed, wind suction or whatever it is. When we do the comparison, the you can see here the colors of the stress diagram. So you can look here that how much the stress is very high in terms of bin system. It reached almost to 56 megapascal, while the stress here for a normal system is only goes to 20, between 12 to 24 megapascal. That means we can reduce the uh, material uh, stress, the stress on the material by almost more than 50%. We made a conclusion for this. We did uh, some, a lot of case study, not only one case study, some with uh, height to length ratio one and one with height to length ratio two, means a square panel and a rectangle panel. And we measured or we checked how much is the deflection, how much is the undercut uh, moment and we checked, we found that the, the moment of the undercut related to the moment of the edge is almost only 36% out of it. What does this mean? It means that we can reduce the thickness of the undercut if we have a panel of 50 mm. The thickness can be reduced almost to 30 mm only. And if we have to design with a stone or with a facade panel of 30 mm, with undercut, you don't need more than 18 mm under the same conditions, under the same loads, under the same sizes. So this gives us several benefits. Either we have a better loading or we have a bigger panels. We can go for a better panels. We don't only do a theoretical installation, but also or theoretical demo or simulation, but also we make a practical ones. So here you can see uh, we did some se seismic test. So under the seismic wave and impact loads, the stone is moving, but nothing is happening to the system. The stone is safe under this high loads. Of course, uh, if you are trying to do this with the system, it's very challenging. So we do a lot of uh, simulation, a lot of uh, engineering, a lot of uh, practical tests as well. This gives us a lot of benefit to our clients. And instead of having a very high weight of stone, you can have a lighter one. This gives direct benefit of reducing the total cost of the uh, system. So you just imagine the main cost is almost is a stone. We can reduce the cost of the stone by almost 40 to 50 percent direct on the material also you if you have a project for example of uh, 6000 meters square of course before we start we have to plan our logistic area we have to plan storage on the site how many containers we have to pay all this logistics storage all this can be direct reduced by 40 to 50 percent by only making uh, better designs by reducing the uh, by cho choosing the correct fixing system. Also, reducing the weight is very important. You just uh, you can imagine when the labor 
is lifting panel which is 100 kg weight is easier for him to lift the panel which is only 50 percent of the weight half the weight and i can give you one practical example from indirect cost when we have to design a structure from a structure point of view and we have in this structure 6000 meters square of limestone if we have 50 mm six stone and we have to design it to use it pin system the total weight of the facade will come to 660 tons but if we have only if we can reduce the thickness of the stone to only 30 mm then the total weight will be 396 tons this will reduce the weight of the full building by 264 tons which is a very uh, huge saving in terms of uh, structural system as well so the system has uh, a lot of benefits from a structure point of view but we don't only focus on structure as well we focus also on architectural point of view we know that uh, consultants uh, like uh, quality or like all other consultants they love to see the natural of uh, stones like uh, a natural stone on the facades so the problem is faced that the thickness of the stone can vary because it's natural material so we developed a system which can work for artificial stone and as well as uh, uh, natural stone even if there is some tolerance in the panel the idea is the distance from the facade to the fixing point of the anchor will be always constant and in between it can take whatever difference or variation in the thickness it is so this will lead to uh, less work in the site for adjustment and better amazing looking from facade uh, architectural point of view Uh, our main aim also in Fisher, not only the product, but the quality. So when we developed the system, we developed also an easy way of quality check to be sure that the system at the highest level of quality. So this tool is very easy. You can just put from one side, it gives you that hole is okay. And from the right side, it should not go. So the hole is okay. And this is called a volumetric check. So these tools you have to put inside and the click. If you see the red mark, that means the hole is not okay. If it is not visible like here in the video, means the hole is fine. So also the quality check is not required a high end professional engineer to do it. It can be done easily by our system. So this uh, how it looks after installation. We can supply here in the screen the full uh, system, not only the anchors or not the undercut anchor, even the aluminium profiles as well. As a conclusion, I would like to highlight that our system uh, can have a benefit of saving time, a benefit of saving cost, and high level of quality and safety. And also it helps our client with the architectural beauty they are looking for for the system. Not only our benefit is limited to that, but also uh, we are developing our BIM, uh, uh, BIM families for the facade with, with dynamic model, which you can just copy on your uh, facade uh, BIM drawing and extract, and it will automatically take the measurement of the uh, facade and put the details of the frame, anchors, undercut anchor, everything. So it is very easy and fast for our engineers to do. Uh, we as Fisher provide a full system, not only aluminium system or uh, anchor system, but also we have a fire stop system. So he, this is here, I'm ending with a, a stone facade fixing system. My expert, Mr. Muzaffar, will speak more about uh, fire stop uh, system for facade to explain to you all our uh, services in terms of fixing and also fire stop. Uh, so I would like to ask uh, Mr. Ahmed to you, hand to Muzaffar. Thank you so Hello. much. Uh, very interesting. I loved your videos in which the anchors are actually showcasing and how they work. So I think, uh, of course, Fisher is a great company and they do have all the German engineering in place. I now take you over to Muzaffar. Muzaffar, the ball is yours. You can share screen now and uh, take on your subject. You have another 15 minutes. 
between 10 and 15 max great great uh, so i think my screen is being shared yeah yeah yep great so uh, just a small correction thank you for a very good introduction mr amit uh, just one small correction i am not from iit but a member of ife institution of fire engineers from the uk all right so uh, after an interesting talk with ms kolte and uh, an interesting description of the support systems uh, the aesthetics has been addressed structural safety has been addressed the only remaining primary concern in terms of safety in facades is the fire safety now generally the chances of ignition of fire within the facade system is negligible however the spread of fire becomes a significant significant safety concern which was voiced by miss kolte also in her discussions so let us discuss uh, in detail about this now before we start let us consider the fact that in case the facade is exposed to fire why do we need to consider fire in facades firstly the facade support system loses structural integrity now this results in falling of burning objects which might pose a massive risk of injury as well as igniting secondary fires now this image here let me just okay this image here shows an example of a facade fire that occurred in the upper floors so as you can see that the fire was only in the upper floors and spread upwards however the devastation caused by the falling debris could be seen in this image secondly there is a significant risk of propagation via the facade system itself and we will discuss this risk a little in detail keeping within the time allotted for this segment here i have a small video how a fire starts in a lower level spreads via the facade surface engulfing the entire facade elevation within a very very short time the speed and the extent of the spread of fire depends on several factors including the facade material the fire compartmentation among others in this case we could see it took a very short while for the fire to spread to the highest floor now once spread on the surface of the facade the fire could quickly re-enter the upper floors thereby ruining the entire passive fire protection of the complete building facade fires have been witnessed in several significant buildings most recently in the apco tower in sharjah uae now improperly sealed perimeter joints or cavity barriers and use of non-tested materials cost lives and huge liability losses this is the reason why this fire safety in facade is a primary concern for many people now we as fisher help in the fight against the propagation of fire and ensuring the compartmentation is maintained thereby saving lives i would like to quote our owner here professor claus fisher who said that safety is the primary concern and we would never uh, put safety on the line for business purposes being uh, that being said for an easier understanding we look at two main types of facade we encounter in high rise buildings namely the curtain wall and the ventilated or rain screen facades curtain walls are an outer envelope of the building the buildings with curtain walls do not have an external structural wall and these facades are generally governed by aesthetics and are responsible for shielding against the external weather elements on the other hand the ventilated facades are also an aesthetic skin over the building structural wall and they also aid in overall insulation of the building from the weather now there is a ventilation gap behind the facade itself and let's look at what are the fire safety challenges in both and understand how the fire spreads in either of them so what i've done is this is a section through a building with a curtain wall facade installed on one side and a ventilated facade on the other side 
when a curtain wall is exposed to an internal fire, the first route the fire and smoke spread is via the unprotected gap between the slab and the wall. Now Fisher provides a solution to close this gap and prevent the internal spread of fire and smoke. However, there is a second route the fire could take that is from the external side after the glass panel have broken under extreme heat. This is known as the leapfrog effect and is affected and is dependent on the type of the facade, the size of the spandrel panels and other active systems in place. Now, on the other hand, the fire behavior in the ventilated facade is slightly different. As in, the internal fire could reach the ventilated facade system via a broken opening like the windows or doors in the structural wall. The fire would rapidly propagate within the ventilation gap and this phenomenon is known as chimney effect or the stack effect. Now Fisher protects against this propagation of fire in this gap. Again, there is a second route the fire takes to spread via the surface burning of the facade material itself. And this is again dependent on the characteristics of the facade material itself. Now, there are codes and standards in place to address this fire behavior as well. So the summary of the code requirements for curtain wall facade is to ensure that the fire rated floor is extended to prevent the internal spread of fire and then the minimum spandrel height is uh, as a guideline to take care of the leapfrog effect. Now the code issued by authorities have jurisdiction. Example, the UAE Fire Life Safety Code also has detailed guidelines on this with a similar intent of addressing the internal as well as external spread of fire uh, in the curtain wall facades. Similarly, for ventilated facade, the code requirements ensure the compartmentation within the ventilation behind the facades to prevent the spread of fire via the chimney effect. And also there are guidelines on the facade material to restrict the spread of fire via the surface spread of facade uh, of fire. Sorry. Now the code issued by authorities having jurisdiction again, for an example, we take the UA Fire Life Safety Code also has a detailed guideline on this with a similar intent of addressing the spread of fire within the ventilated facade systems. Now, finally, just to give a quick peek into the solutions that we provide, uh, we have several listed and tested systems with international testing and certification bodies like the UL, Intertech, or Warrington Fire, etc., for systems designed for perimeter fire barriers in the curtain wall facade. Now we could offer a spray type sealant solution using the RFS or FFBES over the stone wool backing or a dry type of system using just the Fisher FCFCL. Uh, just to briefly show you the application of the wet system, which is a very fast and effective way of providing fire barrier in the perimeter fire barrier systems where the backing material is placed in and then the sealant is applied using a spray equipment. Now the RFS comes with a cutting edge system with just 1.6 mm of wet film thickness for a joint of up to 200 mm width, which has considerable saving in terms of the material. This is the finished look of how it would appear once the fire barrier is in place. Now, just to give you a brief comparison between the wet system and the dry system for fire stopping, uh, there are certain underlying parameters that are affected and should be in consideration before deciding a particular system in a project. Now, for example, there is no water resistance offered by dry system and the movement capability is severely limited. Also, the logistics and the storage cost will be higher due to the increased spaced 
taken up by the product used for the dry system. On the other hand, the RFS based wet system aces in all the parameters except the speed of application as this requires a two part installation of the backing material and the spray system itself. Lastly, we look at the solution that we provide within the ventilated facade system as this as it could be seen in the image this is the structural wall and then you will have a facade coming over the compartmentation generated by the the product itself so the vertical compartmentation is provided by venti stop which ensures the ventilation is present in normal conditions but would close once there is a fire incident happening within the facade also the horizontal compartmentation as required by several codes is provided by the fcfcl system once this is in place you can just uh, place the uh, facade over this and you are sure that the compartmentation is in place behind the facade itself finally just to reiterate that we as a service provider and a partner do not just sell products we always talk about complete service which includes all the products which would be required to support your facade and provide uh, the fire safety required then we also do this design calculations associated with that we customize the solutions as per the site requirement including the engineering judgments required for fire stopping and then we also go the long long way by providing on-site support demo and hands-on concert uh, hands-on training this ensures a peace of mind for all our partners. Now, I would request uh, our uh, host to play our video. Yes. Right. So, uh, the host? Yeah. Amit? Or, yeah. yeah. Can, can you play the video, please? Yes, we are on the job. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, just bear with us.
European ETA assessments and UL underwriter laboratories listings. Well, that was an interesting video. Thank you uh, at the back panel. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we just have a, a few minutes to go. And uh, I'm going to set up a poll where I would be uh, asking the question on the poll. You'll have 15 seconds to answer your, to give your answer on the poll. So I'm going to start with the first uh, question, which is, it starts now. Would you like to have BIM? families objects for facade select one of the following like the second question as you can see on your screen which kind of facade fixing system do you use in your project please make your selection ladies and gentlemen I'll take you to the next question. Which facade cladding material are mostly used in your project? Yeah, the, the questions are pretty much on your screens. Could you take us to the next question, please? What is the average facade business value compared to the total value of your project? Which subframe material is mostly used in your project? Next question, please. According to you, what is the most important factor that should be considered to design a facade? Interesting answers. Next question. What is your preferred testing standard for the facade? What is your preferred fire stop systems for the facade? Just a couple of questions left. What is the usual joint width kept between the facade and the slab in your curtain wall projects? What is your average fire stop facade joint consumption per month? That's just an ideation. So I guess the, the poll is uh, over. I would request uh, my kind panelists, Agnes, Mustafa, and Muzaffar, to switch on your cameras again, please. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to go on to a few questions. There are about 70. Wow, so many questions. So I'm going to take up the ones which I, uh, not the most technical person around town, but I'm going to give it my best. Uh, uh, there's a question from Nada Chami. Uh, this one's for you, Agnes. Does Colte Facade explore lightweight solutions to reduce structural load and embodied carbon in high rise building projects? If yes, what are the main challenges going lightweight? <laughs> uh, yes, um, it depends on what's the aim of the 
uh, of the project and and the developer uh, in some uh, project um, weight is not uh, one of the major considerations in some other projects the main structure has certain uh, limitations uh, to tell you a good example museum of the future it's a donut shaped building and it's steel structure uh, and uh, the weight of the facade does matter a lot because it's uh, pulling the, the, the structure down uh, so depending on the on the shape and structure of the project it can be a very uh, serious or not as important consideration also it's important when it comes to um, uh, building uh, it's echoing for some reason. Um, when, when it's an additional building, um, like an additional floor on an existing building, uh, or uh, using an existing structure in a renovation project and uh, and putting something else, then in, in that case, uh, weight is very important. Um, embodied carbon, that's a complete separate topic. Uh, and yes, again, it depends on if there's a sustainability um, drive for the, for the project. Uh, and uh, uh, it is uh, one of the aspects to focus, then, then yes, it can be researched. Okay, great. Maybe uh, this is another follow up question. This comes from John Garcia. Who is asking if XPS expanded polystyrene is still being allowed in wall of facade or roof if it passes burning characteristics and smoke spread requirements? Is it to me? Yeah. Um, I uh, in uh, different countries there could be different uh, local regulations. Uh, here in the UAE, uh, I don't believe that it would be would be allowed. Um, I have not seen it uh, around for, for quite some time. Okay, so pretty much the answer is, so John, the answer is pretty much no. Uh, there's a question about uh, any solar energy update for buildings coming up in the future. Perhaps, Agnes, you could answer that as well. Say that again, sorry. In terms, of, again, sorry. In terms of buildings which are more solar efficient, this comes from Mohammed Abul Taif, if I've got your name right. Um, um, okay, so solar efficiency can be basically most efficiently increased by adding uh, external shading. If you add external shading, you uh, you uh, uh, you introduce a, a, a lot uh, more ma maintenance problems uh, of uh, cleaning and keeping those those external shading devices um, uh, clean and, and uh, in a working uh, uh, state. So it's a it's a trade off. Uh, there's an optimum. There's also the orientation of the big building, which uh, can be studied, and then um, there, there are additional levels of solar protection, uh, the fenestration ratio, maybe uh, using less uh, um, transparent glazed surface on the building, uh, and then if you use then, um, then um, selecting high performance coatings uh, in a way that they, they have a very good solar performance. Um, it comes hand in hand with uh, the visual light transmission properties of the glass, uh, very, very good uh, solar transmittance uh, tend to influence the uh, the light transmittance, but there are newer generation glass coatings where uh, a very good selectivity uh, number can be achieved, which means uh, the light uh, transmittance, visual light transmittance is still preserved uh, and uh, the solar heat is cut off uh, quite uh, significantly. So there are, okay. there are different approaches, different techniques. Thank you. It, it, has, uh, to, it has to respond to the, the aesthetics, uh, the aesthetic uh, um, vision of the building. So there's a question for both Agnes and Mustafa. Uh, the question is from Edwin Augustin, who's saying, what is your opinion on the pin type fixing for stone facades? Mustafa, you can start this answer. Uh, as I explained uh, in the presentation, uh, bin system, I cannot say it's a bad system, it's a good system, but there is a challenging when you come to bin system 
and there is a lot of limitations. So what we did in Fisher, we have a solution which can uh, go across all these limitations. Main limitation is the size of the panel, uh, thickness of the panel, all this limitation is there. So we have to take each case one by one, and when we have a case which we need a thin material or we have a, we need to use a big stone panels, then we should not think uh, for the bin system, in my opinion. Uh, what's your opinion, Agnes? Um, my opinion is pin system is the traditional way of uh, of fixing uh, fixing stone, and it has been um, proven and tested for for long, and it can be can be done well. But uh, as you mentioned in your presentation as well, uh, it has to be done with uh, with care, uh, and it relies heavily on the workmanship on uh, on site uh, and uh, the installation of of those pins the the right way. Um, uh, the undercut bolt um, technology is uh, safer and uh, less uh, um, visibly uh, disturbing. You can go with uh, smaller joint lines with uh, with that system. Uh, that is, uh, you you need to uh, account for the thickness of the of the pin uh, plates uh, in the joint for for the for the pin system, uh, for example. Uh, but the contractor has to invest a little bit to uh, to get the right uh, drilling bits and the right uh, machine to, um, to, uh, to to be able to uh, to install it. Uh, what I also really like about the undercut ball that it can be used with uh, with other materials as well, uh, with glass as well, uh, and <laughs> and that's yes. a nice application. Okay, yeah, thank yes. you, uh, oh, Mustafa. Uh, another uh, follow-up question, maybe it's either Muzaffar or Mustafa. The question from Munir, who says, do you run any heat load calculation to ensure that the size of the stones or covering the facade is properly selected for the building? What is the U value of these sheets you provide? Uh, we don't do the U value calculation, but we uh, do the calculation for the thermal expansion of the aluminum system and the stone to be sure that there is no any additional internal stressing. Uh, the joint uh, width is okay to ensure that uh, there is no clash when there is thermal expansion on, or contraction is there. This is one of the main uh, factors which can cause safety and failure in facade, ignoring the thermal expansion and contraction for the stone itself and for the subframe. So this one, Fisher, take care in the calculation and we can provide a complete uh, technical uh, solution but uh, regarding the calculation of the U-value, we don't do uh, because there is other material uh, are involved, which is not from Fisher, like the thermal insulation itself, what is a supplier, who is the supplier, uh, from where, and also the, the brick material or the fa facade material, I mean the wall material itself. Uh, can I expand this question uh, as well? Um, uh, uh, stone uh, st uh, mechanically fixed stone system uh, should be installed and designed as a uh, as a rain screen system, which means it's open jointed and ventilated. So there's an air gap behind, and air can actually move uh, through the joint uh, in in that gap. Uh, even if some joint may have some uh, some filling, uh, the overall system has has a, a ventilated gap. Um, for uh, for the uh, linear U value calculation uh, uh, of of this type of systems, usually the stone layer is not uh, taken into consideration because there's uh, ventilated air uh, behind. So you start the U value calculation with the insulation. It's it's a conservative way of of approaching because there will be a little bit uh, of uh, shading effect and uh, uh, insulation effect of the stone, and that's slowly moving moving. Uh, uh, slightly ventilated air behind, but uh, to be on the conservative side, uh, the, the typical way of calculating it is, is not taking the, the stone into consideration, not taking the air gap into consideration, but start the build up from, uh, from there. So as uh, Mustafa mentioned, uh, their uh, part of this whole build up is, is just a small portion. Uh, there are other, uh, other layers and that uh, Typically, the facade consultant or, or the facade contractor who, who has this overall responsibility for uh, for looking at these materials and, and structures come together as an integrated system. 
Okay, I guess uh, Muzaffar, there are quite a lot of questions on fire there. I'll take a few of them. What's the technical difference between RFS 640 and FFBES? Are they compatible? Can we use it interchange interchangeably or adjacent to each other? Or we can patch them? That's, mm, from yes, that's, a, that's a good question, Edward. That's a very good question. Actually, these two products are designed slightly differently and they are com in compliance with two different standards. So there is the American standard of testing and there is the British standard of testing, uh, European standard of testing. So FFBES is predominantly a European product, which are tested thickness of uh, two mm minimum requirement. Then we have the higher product, which is RFS 640 with a 1.6 mm thickness of sealant. And uh, no, they, they cannot be used interchangeable, interchangeably as they are tested to different uh, test standards, basically. So they will be independent systems. Okay. Are these UL tested? Or listed? Uh, UL as a as a uh, laboratory, it is both yeah post both a testing institution as well as a certification body. So we have systems which are tested under the UL as well as listing scheme under the UL, and both these products have uh, certifications from the UL uh, listing. One under the UL European norms certification and the RFS under the European uh, UL American certification scheme. There's another follow-up question on that uh, uh, goes yeah. to you only, Muzaffar, for a fire stop. There are two questions actually. What's the lifetime of the product once you put it in place? And second question is what guarantee do you, does Fisher offer? Well, the uh, product is age tested. So all of the fire stop products are required to be age tested and our products are tested up to 30 years of age, life expectancy. And uh, related to guarantee, it does uh, guarantee or warranty is a, is a very uh, misunderstood topic because it depends totally upon uh, several factors, including how they are being applied. So once the product is applied, you can expect a product life expectancy of 30 years. And then if it is applied correctly, it will function correctly for 30 years. I think that would make sense. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, this is a question from Vaim Eid. He says, he or she, can you please advise why is the new trend of having very high light transmittent glass options in such areas as GCC? If that is the correct question. Agnes, perhaps you could answer that one if, if you know the answer. <laughs> I'm getting the difficult ones. Um, it's... Uh... <laughs> I wouldn't say it's a new trend. Uh, I, I mean, I have been here since 2005 and uh, Shaggs Road was, was full of glass buildings those days uh, as well. Um, whether it's uh, the, the, the right approach or not, it's, it's quite an aesthetic question and many times the architect makes the decision based on, or the developer, architect and developer team makes the decision based on what they want to express with the, with the building. Uh, transparent glass buildings are, um, have a different notion, a different uh, secondary meaning than, uh, than a, a more solid uh, building. Uh, um, local patterns on a building um, have a, a different uh, feel than, uh, than, I mean, the Islamic geometric patterns uh, or, uh, or like straight lines or, or patternless buildings. So they, these, are, these are all aesthetic decisions. Um, more than uh, than uh, performance uh, govern decisions uh, at least um, in the in the past uh, two three decades it, it has been like that in the uh, in the in the middle east uh, but again uh, there are extremely good uh, glass coatings uh, with extremely uh, good uh, selectivity and high performance um, it, uh, it's it's still different than uh, than having a, a masonry wall or or a, a solid concrete wall with, with insulation, of course. Uh, but uh, it could be a bit misleading to see a glass building. It it, it does not mean that it's a complete waste of uh, uh, of, of energy. Okay, uh, take a last couple of questions and then we'll wrap it up in the next five minutes. Uh, perhaps I think Mustafa would answer this one. For the bolt type fixing for stone presented by Fisher, how would they manage if the base of facade is not straight, mainly due to the constructional errors or limitations? 
Will this call for additional usage of runners or there are tolerances? If yes, how much? This is from Abhishek Sharan. Yeah, <clears throat> this is actually a really uh, very good question. That's why Fisher, we have uh, our runners, uh, uh, Malian and Transoms, which it has a tolerances, uh, which we can give to the system. Usually we prefer to give uh, plus or minus uh, minimum of 20 mm. But we have very uh, wide range of sizes of brackets and with vertical profiles, which we can make match both together to reach whatever tolerance they have in the building. It can be managed by our frames. Okay. I guess as I keep asking questions, there are more and more <laughs> questions coming up, which is, which is good and bad in a, you know, but I am not a specialist, so I'm going to give it my best shot to ask. Uh, Muzaffar, this one's for you, buddy. If if the pipes within the facade panels, if I have pipes, this is from Munir Jode. If I have pipes within the facade, why I have to use collars only? If I have a slab edge provision which allows me to fix pipe and put the sealant around, is there any direct system or we should go with engineering judgment? Oh well, there uh, there is a good question because here well, there are two problems. One is to have something called a penetration requirement and then there is a joint requirement so the question number one regarding collars collar would be only required if it is a kind of a combustible pipe right to close that gap however now when you have this kind of mixed up system then the only solution would be to go with a, a with an engineering judgment with a product which is tested for both joints as well as penetrations like the rfs 640 which is an all rounder, which is having testing, a lot of testing behind it for penetration as well as joints, where we can combine these two together into an engineering judgment. So it's a little bit of both, right? Using your brain and getting the right product to work with it, I guess. Hey, exactly. Using the right product and the right testing behind it, and then combining that with an experience and then coming up with an engineering judgment for that. So another one uh, for you as well, Muzaffar. Uh, yes. This is from Adrian Jones, who's asking, we are still seeing a lot of ACP used in this region with wet seal joinery. What is the panel view of the fire spread propagation risk on the facade surface from these sealants? Does the use of the sealant and applicable backer rods not undermine the fire rating of the panel materials and the design system? If so, why is it still being used? Huh. Good question, buddy. Very, very good question. So if I understood it right, they are, they are talking about how the sealant as well as the backer rod is actually adding into the propagation of the fire within the ACP panels. So uh, to answer that, uh, first of all, let me tell you that ACP panels and the ventilated facade system as a whole is always tested as a complete system under any of the testing schemes, be it the NFPA 285, which gives a, a, a testing of the spread of the uh, fire over the panel, so in that system, when you go for the testing, you have to include number one, the panel itself, the subframe itself, then the joints between the panels and the backer rod behind that. Being said that, then uh, we have sealants which are fire rated that could be along as a system. So if the system is passing under an NFPA 285 test, then it will be certified to be used for uh, the usual application. However, we do not want to use any non fire rate sealant or non fire rate backer rod, which will add onto the fire, which will automatically fail the NFPA 285 test. Okay, I'm going to take the last uh, question. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, you have a lot more questions. Uh, first of all, uh, before I answer the last question, all the presentations that we have shown will be shared on wfmmedia.com. For those of them you would like to access them, we will put them up by tomorrow. Please bear with us. And uh, also the names of the presenters, Fisher and Agnes are there. If you would like to reach out to them, if it's okay for them, uh, kindly do reach out to them. Sure. The questions which have come from you, we will send out to them so that whoever can answer those questions separately on a call or on an email, they will take it forward. And uh, I'll take a last closing question. How much, Agnes, this one's for you, I guess. How yes. much is the drop? How much is the drop in sound reduction due to the aluminum framing on the facade system in general? Say my glass has a 42 dB RW. What will be the expected overall sound reduction, including a facade framing? 
Yeah. Okay, there, yeah, there, there are some rules of, of, of thumbs for this, but it heavily uh, depends on uh, on the type of the framing as well. Uh, and actually, um, unitized system where it's a male, female, mullion coupled together and there's a soft gasket in between uh, tends to be, uh, behave a bit better than a stick system, which is a, 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 a box. Uh, there's my camera box uh, section uh, continues uh, uh, inside the outside. Uh, you can also improve uh, the acoustic rating of it by um, uh, acoustic consultants uh, sometimes uh, advise on uh, stuffing the, uh, the, the empty uh, mullion with, uh, with some kind of uh, rock wool type material. It can be done with six system, it cannot be done with unitized system because it, it blocks movement. So it, it heavily depends on the, on the type of the frame, but there uh, is a reduction. There's also much more reduction uh, if it's an opening uh, uh, window or opening door um, than, uh, than uh, if it's a fixed, uh, fixed glazed uh, uh, structure for all right uh, i think thank you to all our attendees here from all over the gcc it's been a pleasure hosting uh, this webinar today from wfm media as you can visit our site uh, let me add one minute before i say bye uh, we're actually working on building the world's first and the world's largest virtual community for the window and facade industry worldwide and you will hear more from us and more about it in the next couple of, uh, I guess, by, by August. Uh, we would like to present this to the worldwide audience where people, architects, clients, consultants, buyers and suppliers can get to talk to each other, can communicate with each other, can actually have a call together, have questions and answers together and actually build the world's first real time virtual software related a virtual community built on a very nice software at the back end which we've been working on for the last few months with that i'd like to thank agnes once again for joining today it was brilliant i think the q a I should have started from q a right from the, the beginning <laughs> yes <laughs> mustafa thank you very much uh, once again thank you. Uh, Muzaffar, thank you i'd like to thank my team at wfm media back here to have organized this show and we've had a, a wonderful last one and a half hours with that uh, good evening, have a nice rest of your day and the whole week to the office and uh, namaste from here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Thank Thanks for listening. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.